Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Everyday Podcast, your gateway to the casual side of business. I am your host, Matt Esposito, and I will let our wonderful co-host introduce himself. I am your wonderful co-host, Andrew Sadikov, and on today's episode, we are going to talk about running a startup. Running and also launching a startup uh, kind of blends in with last week's, or no, the week before last week's episode, which was all about our entrepreneurship journey. And speaking of last week's episode, if you haven't checked out episode three, which was titled Let's Talk Photo and Video, we had our lovely creative director from EDE, and he's also a multimedia specialist at EDS, uh, Mr. Jared Sugar here. We had a great uh, conversation about the world of photo and video. Um, Andrew was on here too, and, and they both gave some advice to beginners, you know, talked about the equipment we use, our, our creative process. From from both companies and the every, everyday brand. So if you haven't got a, a chance to check that out, uh, please do. And please also, if you haven't checked out our website yet, uh, along with follow us on social media, uh, our you know social media act profiles are all active now. The website's complete, everything's up and running. Um, and another podcast announcement: we're also taking uh, submission forms for guests. So if you don't even know, if we've never even met before, and you you know want to be on the podcast, you don't even have to be an entrepreneur or a business owner. Feel free to shoot us an email, DM us on Instagram, whatever uh, works best for you. And you know we'd love to have anyone in it. And everyone on the podcast, and, you know, as we said before, we're going to start to get a couple more guests um, on the episodes as we move forward. Any more podcast updates that I missed, Mr. Sadikov? No, I think that's it. I think you did a good job. All right. So moving on to the topics breakdown for today's episode. First off, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of founding slash working at a startup. Uh, then we're going to move on to steps to launch a startup. And we're going to end it with managing a startup. So starting out. What's a startup? So a startup is a small business uh, that a entrepreneur or a group of entrepreneurs found um, when they you know, think they have a very unique service or product that they want to bring to the market. Uh, most startups start as like a shoestring operation. And if you don't know what that is, that's when uh, a business, when it's launching, usually gets initial funding from like friends or family. You know, it's nothing serious. They need to validate the, their business model before uh, you know, taking things to, uh, to the next level. And the term startup is used for businesses um, that necessarily, like I, I just stated, don't have their business mo model, you know, validated or don't have like some form of financial stability. Um, but don't be fooled. There are startups that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, so there, there's different types of startups, but it's just a general term used uh, by entrepreneurs. Um, so moving on to the pros and cons of founding slash working at a startup. So first off, when it comes to working at a startup, and I think Andrew can give insight to this uh, even more than I can, you know, you're not just a number or a name at a corporate entity. You know, your impact is visible on a lot of different levels. I don't know if, it, if you want to add to that because, you know, you're at top of the, the hierarchy here at EDE, so what you do is seen on a daily basis by everyone as opposed to maybe other jobs you've had in the past where that's not the case or you are just seen as a you know, another staff member. Right, exactly. Um, you, for one thing, the social aspect of it definitely carries over to the rest of your team. So oftentimes when you start a new job, and you can work your way up into a position similar to, you know, to what we are now uh, in virtually any, you know, field that you want to be in. But when you start a new job, you're kind of at the bottom of the ladder, and the stuff that you do doesn't really affect, well, for one thing, doesn't affect the people below you because there's nobody below you, um, you know, oftentimes. And for another thing, there's a lot of people at a similar position as you are and at a higher position than you are that will kind of mitigate the environment to what they want it to be. Uh, and even if issues arise, they're definitely going to be taken care of appropriately, especially a company that's been around for a long time that knows how to deal with these issues. Um, it's nothing new that they've never seen before. Um, and, and they'll keep a certain environment the way that they want it to be. Um, when you start a startup, that is up to you. So you have to keep your environment the way that you want it to be. If you are generally a very um, heated person, uh, then you're going to have a very heated company environment because everything is going to follow the tone that you initially set for it. This can be good or bad. Um, oftentimes, this requires a lot of reflection on yourself to really understand what you can do better um, and maybe how you might not be the best representation of what you're aiming for. But I think very quickly within a startup, you kind of understand, okay, this is the way I have to act. Right. These are the, this is the way that I want things to run. And from there, you're able to set the tone, which is fantastic, obviously, because um, it's the environment that you want. And you create it for yourself. And if you want it to change, then you just change your behavior and everything kind of follows suit. 
Um, the other thing is your impact on the work that you do. So in a smaller company, you might be in charge of, you know, data entry. You're entering numbers. I mean, yeah, you get to see the numbers that you entered, and I'm sure that it is uh, incredibly important, but it's not that same sense of gratification of, wow, I can see how exactly how this has you know, affected somebody. It's a little bit more uh, deeper. There's more layers and levels to the stuff that you're doing. When you work in a startup, every single action that you either do or don't do has a drastic a effect. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, if I'm entering numbers all day long and I enter the wrong number, then all right, well, somebody's gonna have to go back and fix it or I'm gonna have to go back and fix it. There's gonna be, you know, whatever. But there's gonna be people that are affected by that, other people on the team that are gonna take care of that, whatever. In a startup, if you do something wrong, that's entirely on you to notice that it's wrong and to fix it. And until you complete that entire cycle of identify the problem, find a solution, execute the solution, and make sure that the you know solution has worked, nothing is going to happen and nothing is going to go anywhere and that problem is going to continue to exist. So you definitely have to rely on yourself in that sense, but also, you know, every decision that you make, if it's a good decision, is going to have a great impact on the work that you produce. The next thing is that when it comes to a startup, there's no room for having lazy people on the team if you even have a team to begin with. And even when you, you get to that point, which most startups do, where they require you know professionals in their field or just other founding members of the business, you're surrounded by extremely passionate people of, of what you're doing. Um, and that's usually not the case in a corporate entity. Like if you're going in a nine to five job and you're sitting in your cubicle, you know, you don't have the relationship with your other coworkers. You may not even know your co uh, other coworkers um, in that sense or in some jobs, um, but you really do get to meet and be surrounded by people just like you because there's no room for, you know, mistakes when it comes to forming a team in a, in a startup. I don't know if you have any, anything mad about that. Right, exactly. I think it did a great job describing it. Um, definitely everything is a reflection of what you do. Right. So there's absolutely, if something doesn't get done and it's just never going to get done, no one's going to take that over from you. Mm -hmm. and, and the visible impact, the reason we brought that up is because that's, that's usually because you have more opportunity within a startup and more responsibilities, um, especially if you're a founding member of the startup. But even, you know, the first few team members that join a startup group, they will have more responsibility and more opportunity, room to grow, um, you know, than you would at uh, other businesses that are not labeled startups, you know, because someone coming in, you know, like w come some of the first few team members, they're also practically creating the position, you know, someone may not have been in their position before. So they have the opportunity to grow within that and create, you know, blossom, whatever they want out of it, you know, ma make the best of it. Um, and that ultimately leads to more experience, you know, as a founding member of a startup, I wouldn't have gotten this experience if I was still working at the golf course I worked at or, you know, if he was still washing cars at a car dealership, you know, and that experience is, is priceless. The other thing is no day is the same in a startup. And that's what I wrote down as a pro too. And I, uh, as a pro too, and I know you agree with that. Every day is different. You know, I know we, we've given like a day in, in our lives before, um, but, but no day, I mean, no day is the same. Um, and the reason we we like that is because we're, we're doing different things every day. Like I said, more opportunity, more responsibilities, more more experience. So we get to do different things each day, meet new people, um, rise up to new challenges that, that can come up. Um, and it's just a great time. Right, absolutely. I completely agree with that. Um, I'm definitely somebody who doesn't like to do the same thing every day. Um, which is a little bit ironic because I'm a computer science major, which kind of people assume that you're just sitting there writing code the whole time. In reality, there's a lot more variety to that than you think. But regardless, um, you know, working in a startup, definitely, if you like to constantly solve problems and solve new problems, if you like uh, to really get creative, um, then that this definitely is something that I would suggest, especially if you find it difficult to sit still for a long time, you know, right. doing a mundane task. Because again, there's still gonna be stuff you have to do. You know, sometimes you have to sit there for six hours and copy a bunch of information into QuickBooks. Uh, but regardless, you know, that's not your job. That's just aspects of it. And a lot of other aspects of it are very different and very dynamic. Uh, so definitely, um, you know, that's awesome if that's something that you're into. And another thing that comes with more opportunity within uh, working at a startup is I feel you have the opportunity to obtain a, a mentor role from someone in upper management because you have that, you know, really personal, I guess, friendship, you know, which develops over time uh, with with members in a startup that, uh, you know, in turn allows you to gain, you know, a, a mentor that can guide you, um, you know, in, into your position and as, as you blossom moving forward. 
And I found interesting um, when I was doing research today. Did you know that 90% of startups fail? I, d I didn't know that. I mean, I knew the number was high, but when I, I looked up a couple different study studies, and that number was the same. 90% of startups fail, and it was like an even higher percentage fail within the first two years. Right. So I found that to be a very, you know, obviously a startup is high risk, but I found that to be very interesting that that number is that high. Oh, uh, that's a high number, but what do they consider a startup? Is it like right. I mean, LLC well, has been formed? Like I mean, legally? I'm sure legal entity. Um, yeah, that's, that is a higher number than I expected, I guess. But on the other hand, I mean, that's one out of ten. It's so not. It's right. not that bad. After two in years, reality. Yeah, and we're past two years. two years. I mean, um, that's that's crazy. Again, but if you think of if you think of it like that, you know, as long as you know, if you've got twenty people in a room, and they all start startups, and I mean, I guess that's not a perfect statistic because half of them probably don't want to. But you got twenty people who want to start a startup, and two of them will actually succeed. I'm going to take my chances. I think right. those are uh, those are pretty decent odds, especially considering. Um, a lot of the people are, for one thing, just not going to be as dedicated. You know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of these companies could have succeeded. Right. Uh, they just people realize that I don't really have the resources to push this. Right. Or maybe I want to modify my idea a little bit and revisit this at another time. Um, and then the other thing is you can always try again. So you can have, I mean, this isn't 90% uh, of time. entrepreneurs. This yeah. is 90% of startups. Right. So you can start 10 companies. Right. And statistically, one of them will eventually succeed. Right. Um, obviously, you should learn from all of them. Uh, but, you know, that's also another opportunity there. So I guess the number is fair, um, but it is higher than I thought it would be. Yeah. And the top two reasons were finances, of course. I knew that would be high on the list. And uh, just loss of, like, passion for what they do, which is surprising right. because if you're going to go into something that you're putting all this time into, isn't that something you decide right off the bat? Like, Yeah, definitely. It's not worth it. You and know, if anything, I, I, and you'd agree on this too, our passion for what we do has grown over the past two years. Like it was great. It was there when it started, but now it's at a whole other level. Like mm -hmm. it's progressed as we've progressed as a company. It right. wasn't stagnant or it didn't decrease like it did for. Yeah, no, if anything, uh, it's, it just continues to rise. Um, again, there's a difference between starting a startup because it's something you love and starting a startup because you want to make money and they're not the same and people constantly believe that i can torture myself for 12 hours a day if i'm making great money then it's going to be fine i'll, I'll deal with it you won't be happy whatever yeah. um it's going to reflect in your work especially in a startup uh -huh. where like we discussed you have a high you know amount of impact on everything you do you being upset for 30 minutes is going to affect the quality of the work that you produce in those 30 minutes uh -huh. which is going to be very important considering right. You've got a smaller team, you've got a smaller number of clients, uh, and stuff like that. So definitely those are two different aspects. So there, you know, there are industries that have tons of money in them. Cybersecurity, you know, ver a lot of people can go get a cybersecurity certificate, uh, learn an ancient coding language that nobody likes and nobody wants to learn, and make very good money, honestly, working in that language. Um, and logically it would make sense, right? I'm now I'm gonna start a company with a bunch of other professionals and I'm gonna work on all these government databases that are all using this archaic stuff. But if you hate it, you're, it's just not going to go anywhere. And at some point, you're going to say, listen, why am I doing this? You know, okay, sure, I'm, I'm going to, in theory, eventually, once you get over the initial hump, make money, but I'm miserable, you know? Right. So I definitely don't recommend that at all. So that brings us into the cons of founding slash working at a startup. Um, so the first thing we wrote down in our notes was that it's a high risk for both parties. So that includes staff and ownership. And that, of course, comes with the fact that uh, when you're talking about a startup, usually there's some level of instability. Um, and that's why it, it's labeled as high risk, but that's why startups or, for, or entrepreneurship in general is for risk takers. Um, you know, would you, would you agree on that? So definitely, um, from a financial standpoint, it's a lot of high risk. You know, it's high risk because, you know, our company, for example, we know we have an office, we have overhead, mm -hmm. we have this equipment, all these other things. Um, and then we're going to start, you know, a little bit about compensation later and talk about how the rates aren't there. But again, if you want to immediately make a ton of money, then your first one or two years of business, unless you have a fantastic idea or you genuinely are amazing at what you do and you get lucky with your implementation of it, you're just not going to make that much money. It's just not going to happen unless you really know what you're doing, in which case then obviously that's from your experience. Right. Um, but the other thing that I would definitely say is even if we started Everyday Espo, and instead of everything kind of starting to slope upwards the way it has for us, and instead of everything working out well, everything started to fall apart, and the marketing industry became oversaturated, and we started losing clients, and the whole company ended up shutting down, I wouldn't necessarily say that, for me, it's high risk. 
because I have learned so much. No, of course. Uh, no, that yeah. even if it didn't work no, out, yeah. it's I mean, it's it's a better return on investment than college. Of course. No, so, we'd, we'd be able to translate um, our experience anywhere. It's, it's a high risk, but it's not a high ri- as high a risk for me as going to a university is, for example. Oh, yeah, of course. So definitely... Um, it depends on what you're into. Again, if you if you're you know if you're a doctor and you're going to start a startup, you're probably not going to learn any more medicine than right. you already know. And I mean, you will, but it's it's not you know that's not the best way to become a doctor to start a, a startup you know doctor's office. Um, in that case, for sure, it's going to be a high risk operation that you may or may not benefit from. But if you're young um, and you're passionate about a certain industry, then definitely uh, you'll get you'll get that return. Even if it fails, you'll get the return on just right. experience. And I guess that moves us into our next topic, which is compensation. And we don't just mean like dollars. We mean things like benefits. And to me, there's also two sides of, of, of uh, compensation because I, I feel like I'm, I'm rewarded, like I'm compensated in terms of, you know, I, I see the company and we're at some level of success right now. And that's, that's to me, compensation in a sense. That, that's what I consider, uh, you know, a, a variety of, of compensation. But as Andrew said before, when you start a startup, and I guess even like companies like Google and Apple, I'm sure there was a point where their, their employees weren't making what they should have. You know what I'm right. saying? Like I feel like everyone starts at some point, you know? And I feel like that's something that builds over time as, as everything progresses. And, and as we've seen, you know, we started out with zero resources and, and zero financial mm-hmm. stability. And look where we have now. You know, we never worry about, about payroll or paying the rent or anything like that. You know, right. and I think that's that's saying something that it's come a long way. You know, well, that also says I'm good at, man- at, at managing <laughs> accounting. But other than that, um, obviously, that says something about how successful or uh, you know, that we've attained a level of success. You right. Know? Exactly. Um, and coming back to compensation originally when I was working for the company and you know this and, uh, you know, I wasn't the only one, but it was we've got a shoot going on and, you know, something goes wrong and now it requires an extra 10 hours in post. If I put those 10 hours in post, you know, into payroll, there's going to be a problem. And uh, even though the company can probably pay for it, it's going to negatively affect uh, the trajectory that we're on. Okay, we're going to pay this kid for his time. We can do that. But now the camera equipment that we were going to buy is getting pushed back. The office is getting pushed back. Other opportunities are getting pushed out. We can't have a table at this next, you know, whatever conference networking or event, networking yeah. event. Um Everything is starting, not that it's going to fall apart, but you've now pushed everything backwards. Like a domino So to really, um, you know, you really have to think about every single dollar and, okay, am I taking this dollar for myself today or am I pouring it back into the company? And is it going to be worth it? Because for me, for example, you know, this is not my, you know, company from like a legal standpoint. I'm not an owner, um, but that doesn't mean that it might, for me, it still might be a better investment, especially when the company's new to really consider, okay, yeah, I can ask Matt for a higher rate and write down every second that I spend doing something, but that's just going to further, you know, distance the the, the actual, you know, success. Um, So I will only be screwing myself over if I do something like that. So definitely understand that when working with us in a startup, it is an investment, uh, that you're eventually going to hope to get a return. Right. It's and an every, investment like everything. You know. So, yeah, exactly. And that leads into our next topic, which is how resources may be limited. So for us to start, we, of course, had very limited resources. We had only the essential equipment that we need needed, you know, it was like on a per project basis, like this is how many hours we can put towards this project and use utilize these employees. Sometimes we were even choosing to use certain employees over others because of the rates that we right. that we had for them at the time. Like that's how limited our, our resources were, you know. It, it's fortunately it's nowhere near like that now for us. Of course, in some aspects it is, and there always will be, no matter how small or big the company is. Um, but at, working at a startup, your resources may be limited. You you sometimes have to think out of the box and utilize the resources that are in front of you instead of having the most high-tech, advanced stuff, um, which usually translates into expensive. Um, right. And it essentially makes your job easier. Uh, but in the beginning and working for a startup or even owning a startup, that's sometimes not the case. Right, exactly. Uh, moving on to a work and life balance. So the reason I wrote that, that down that, uh, you know, specifically for a con is because I struggled with that in the beginning because it was extremely stressful. I mean, and it, of course it still is on, on many levels, um, but there was just so much worrying in the beginning. Um, and I learned to let go of a lot of things and, and you know, uh, pass off some responsibility to upper management and other employees, but it, it can be very stressful and it requires you to have... Uh, 
to maintain a good work or life balance or things will quite literally get off balance. And I know right. that's that's big for you too. I mean, it's big for all of us, but us too, ex especially because we, I mean, we put in the most hours at the company. So, and I think we've gotten a good, you know, grasp on that, especially over the past year because we've been able to focus on other things. And if anything, sometimes us working less or, you know, sometimes working less translates to a better uh, work-life balance. We produce better work, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. I know you always like sometimes, or I haven't done it in a while because I feel like it's not as big of an issue anymore, but you know, maybe a year ago you'd always be like, oh, and maybe instead of working 80 hours this week, I work 40, but wait a second, my work was better. My mm. quality of work was better. I come in happier, you know, maybe I'm not devouring all the snacks in the snack cabinet <laughs> now for some reason or, you know, stuff like that. So just because you're working more, um, sometimes that, that may not translate into more success. Sometimes it's, it's the opposite. Right. And this is actually something I'm very grateful that Matt had a really good under understanding of, probably just through family, through friends. I don't know if it was so much personal through experience, personal experience, so, well, but yeah. you were so careful with making sure that none of us burnt ourselves out. Um, again, which which is an, it's just a it's a legitimate problem, especially when you're doing something that you love. I mean, I absolutely adore working with these cameras and editing and everything. I feel like I could do it forever. But you understand that if I shoot for 12 hours straight the quality of my content is going to substantially drop. Right. And coming back out of that, you know, kind of valley is a lot harder than falling into it. You know, it's a lot easier to say, I'm going to limit myself today. I'm not going to spend all night editing this project. I'm going to go to bed um, and work on it tomorrow is a lot more efficient than banging out the project and then spending the rest of the week trying to recover right. from, you know, that one night when you pulled an all-nighter. And sometimes you have to do that. And you have to really understand, uh, you know, how much you can afford to do. You know, I can afford to do this this night. Tomorrow's going to be an easier day for me. And then I can afford to work a full, proper, like, you know, whatever rest of the week. Um, that's definitely something you did a very good job with, you know, being able to tell me and catch me at times and say, Andrew, you know, I love the commitment, but you also have to understand that, you know, sometimes you need to take a break. Sometimes you need to change, you know, that maybe what you're working on uh, and stuff like that. So it's definitely been uh, really great. Well, I, would, I mean, I would ask you directly or I mean, not just you, but, uh, you know, mostly upper management, but sometimes other uh, staff members, I would say, you know, are you getting burnt out? I'd be pretty blunt or right. or if I if I noticed it, I would say something, you right. know. Exactly. And the quality of work definitely is there. Um, there will be times when I don't shoot something for maybe an entire week. I have an easier week and I come back and I feel just so refreshed and so ready. And all of a sudden I've got a new idea for a shot. And all of a sudden I'm like messing with the setting because I'm like, oh, I can get this awesome lens flare that I would have never thought of right. you know, before. Uh, so definitely it's nice to, to, to kind of recharge at times and understand that that's valuable and that you can't just keep going. You know, people say be the hardest worker in the room. But at the same time, like if, if that just means killing yourself, then there's going to be got, you know, people that are more successful than you right. are not working as hard just because they manage everything better. And that may affect your success negatively if you're putting out bad work like that. You absolutely, know? absolutely. Especially in the long run, you know. All right. So moving on from pros and cons, uh, moving on to how to launch a startup. So obviously launching a startup uh, starts with a solid idea and lots of research. Uh, now, your idea doesn't have to be extremely unique to be, you know, extremely successful. We're a marketing agency. We're a photo and video company. Um, there's a lot of other companies just like us out there, but we do what we do differently than other companies. That's what makes us successful, you know? So don't think just because other people already have your idea or it's not something that's already invented, it can't be successful. Um, but launching a startup starts with a lot of research. Um, and of course, a business model, which is extremely important, getting some short term goals, some long term goals. I had like a seven, eight, nine page document before I even formed the LLC saying, oh, you know, this is where I want to be in a year or two. These are my thoughts on this. This is the current situation, you know, X, Y and Z. And of course, like looking back at it now, if you read the document, you'd laugh like you know, half the stuff changed and sometimes even for the good. And sometimes, you know, I wrote down stuff I wanted to do in five years, like have an office. And that happened in like less than a year or right. like a, whatever, 12, right, exactly. 14 months. Um, so you need some sort of business model and plan in place. 
The next thing you need is framework. So that's everything from, you know, agreements, job forms, uh, employee papers. You know, you're going to want things like non-disclosure agreements to protect information, non-compete agreements. If you, wa if you, you know, don't want your staff members going out and working for other companies in the same industry or freelancing. Um, and if, most importantly, you're going to need a bookkeeping keep system, which took me a while to develop. Um, we use, you know, QuickBooks. A lot of companies use QuickBooks for most of their accounting. And I... Uh, you know, also use uh, money.com and Google Drive uh, within the company, but that took me a while and it took me, um, you know, like my accountant to push me to do that. I used to be scrambling for this and that, and now we're extremely organized to a T where I can complete payroll in under an hour and, uh, you know, everything else just doesn't take as long as it did. So having some sort of system in place for your bookkeeping and accounting. Um, and that is something you develop over time because, you know, there's stuff that we do now, transactions that we make and numbers we run and this and that, that we didn't do a year ago. So it takes time to develop, but sitting down and getting some, some sort of initial framework for that is extremely important. Uh, moving on, on to, you know, you need to get some sort of digital presence out there. So that could mean a website, social media. You know, of course, we sit here and we build these extravagant websites and this and that. But sometimes for a startup, all you're going to have is a one-page Wix site for a couple of months till you get your business model validated or, or you know, et cetera. But you need, uh, you know, you need a, a brand presence on the market. So obviously that involves creating some sort of logo, even if it's clip art. You just want something for your customers to recognize you. And then, you know, your work will, sp will speak from there and it'll just take step after step. Next thing after that, um, you're going to want to decide, and sometimes you decide, you know, this before. This isn't necessarily in order, but if you want to do this alone, or do you want a team with you? Do you want a partner? You know, how do you want that to work out? Um, and that's definitely something you need to think about before getting into, you know, forming your LLC or your S or C corp or whatever applies to, you know, what what, what you would be launching. Um, but definitely deciding if this is something you want to take on a loan or sometimes hiring a professional in the field that you're trying to get into and partnering with them sometimes is a great idea for right. entrepreneurs that are trying to learn more about that industry while, while you know, diving into that market. Um, the next thing, funding. Uh, so there's a couple different types of uh, ways that you can fund a startup. So first off, like self, you know, like loan, bank loans, um, friends and family, just personal savings. Um, also incubators. Uh, usually those are done through like universities for students, stuff like that. Um, like seed, seed funding and also, you know, VCs, venture capitalists, you know, that's when you usually sell a part of your business to someone or found it with someone who just not is just in for it for the money, but someone who's providing funding for you to get your idea off the ground and they believe in you right. um, to try and make that idea successful. Sometimes that's also someone that has the experience or is a professional in the field that you're trying to get into. Um, so sometimes it's like a win-win situation, but there's multiple different ways to get funding uh, for your small business. And also, do you have anything to add before I move on? I don't know if I'm missing anything. Or no, I think that's, uh, that's pretty well said. Um, again, this sounds pretty complicated, but you could like literally Google a lot of oh, these no, things. Yeah. I mean, these are just terms. Yeah, these really are just terms. And understand, I'm sure there's plenty of people in, in your life, you know, who know some of these things just from, you know, being older and being experienced. And I'm sure that a lot of people listening just know this off the top of their head, just from being around. Uh, and finally, if you don't know something, you can always look it up. There's, or ask I mean, us. This hasn't really changed. Yeah, yeah. you can, and this, honestly. Because this list is compiled from, if I went back two years, what would I want to know, you know, at least right. the basics for how to launch a startup or what, or what does it involve? What does it entail? Um, next thing I have, I have down is understanding the road ahead. Cause like we said, it's very high risk. It's not going to be easy. Um, but if you love what you do, then it's not work. I know it's cliche, but it, but it's true. You know, I, w I wake up in the morning. I mean, I wake up elated every morning to, you know, mm -hmm. do what, what we do on a daily basis. Um, but you just got to understand what the road is going to look like. Cause for, and, and it varies by industry too, based up, you know, what, what type of startup you're doing, you know, tech's a lot different from marketing and it's a lot different from cybersecurity. Either way, th there's no shortcuts. It's going to be a long journey. Um, and it's going to require a lot of hard work. Um, and there's definitely going to be a lot of failure within that, within that road ahead. Moving on. So you want to form some sort of legal entity. As I stated before, there's all different types, like forming an LLC, a partnership, S corp, C corp, um, you know, it's best to go to a lawyer or an accountant uh, to get 
um, advice on which, what would be best for you, but you want to protect yourself and separate yourself uh, from your business and your personal assets. That way someone can't sue, your, sue you or, you know, they can only sue what, what's in the business or, you know, stuff like that. So there's just a lot of legal complications right, exactly. um, that you don't necessarily need to understand and study to start a startup, but you want to protect yourself right. and your staff members um, because who knows, your idea could blow up and if you don't have the right, you know, uh, things like a trademark in place and people can steal your idea and that's it, you know, right, take, exactly. every, take everything from you. And I mean, these things sound scarier than they are. Yeah, I think no, a lot of people kind of look at this stuff and they're like, oh my, I need an LLC, I need insurance for my company, I need like all this accounting stuff. And, and, and it adds up very quickly, but in reality, it's not as scary as it looks. Or expensive. Um, I mean, it was like $125 to form the LLC. I mean, right. we, we had to pay an accountant and and uh, or a lawyer to to do that um but you know you could do it on your own honestly if you wanted to there's a couple different stuff you have to do but it's it's really right, not exactly. like the the ussba and all the rules they have in the nation they they want people to start businesses you know right. this is capitalism right. so they make it fairly easy for you to do so um so moving on to hiring professionals so i've stated many times like it's a great idea um to and sometimes almost completely necessary like it was for us when we started out as just a photo and video company obviously like I'm not a professional filmer so I immediately hired people like Andrew um, and the original crew to you know take care of, of those needs you know so it's best to hire people that are professional sometimes you know you can't automatically afford people with 25 years experience and this and right, that right exactly. off the I was bat. Say, I wasn't really a professional um, filmer well, know, at the but, time either but, but it was better than what I could pretend exactly, of course you exactly. know what I'm saying so you got and everyone's got to start somewhere regardless I mean I mean, look how far you've come now. You're definitely right, a professional right. filmmaker now. But, um, you know, definitely hiring professionals or just outsourcing in general whatever you can't do um, just so that it's taken care of is, is a great idea. Um, and moving on for that, launching your service or product, you know, this takes a couple months to gather, sometimes years, you know, depending on the industry that you're in. Um, but once you get everything compiled, you know, you can launch your service and, and product to the markets. Um, and one thing I, I did want to note about launching a startup is that there will always be change and uncertainty. You know, you, like I said before, your business model is going to completely change. Sometimes the services you complete are, are, are services you offer are going to completely change. And we're a great example of that because we started out as just a photo and video company. Then we added social media work. Then we added graphic right. design, then e-commerce, then web dev, you know, now digital marketing, all this stuff. I mean, if you'd asked me what retargeting was and you know, what's <laughs> Honestly, CTR and C right. CPC and all this other stuff like a year and a half ago, two years ago, I would have said, I don't, I don't even know what that is. Is this pharmaceuticals? I don't, I don't, I don't know. So, you know, your the plan ahead is, is most likely going to change. But that, that's the fun part of it. You know, to me, that's that that's that that's exciting. You know, not knowing what's going to be in the future, but knowing as long as you work hard for it, something will come of it. You have anything to add about um, launching a startup or advice for I don't know, entrepreneurs? No, not really. Um, but go and do it. And on the other hand, uh, nothing prevents you from gaining the experience before you launch one. Um, so say you want to start a photo and video company, you can buy a camera and learn to use your camera and maybe even talk to a few businesses and say, hey, you know, I'm a currently I'm just, you know, doing some camera work on my own for myself. But I'm hoping to, you know, maybe get some experience through you guys. You know, I can make you a video, you know, build up your portfolio a little bit. There's really no harm in, uh, in preparing yourself for the startup phase. Don't feel like um, you have to just immediately start dumping money and talking to lawyers and doing all this. Um, definitely, there is some to be learned before that even happens. Uh, but also, don't be afraid of it. And uh, definitely get it done. There's a lot of people that I meet who do awesome stuff. Have great um, ideas. Yeah, they, they have great ideas. They produce Talents. amazing work. And I asked them, like, oh, you have a company, you know, you do this. Oh, no, I, I don't have any of that. I'm not an LLC or anything. Oh, okay, well, you're missing out. Right. You know, you definitely get that done. You know, don't don't postpone that. Or they refer to it as a side hustle when really right. we look at it and we're like, wait a second, that that shouldn't be a side hustle for you. Right, you know, right, based exactly. off of getting to know someone. Um, and and the, the other thing I was going to note about that was could I have learned – to be a professional filmmaker over the past couple of years. Yeah, I think I have the capability to do so. But knowing that that's not where my real passion and what my talent is, what's what made us who we are today. The company would still just be a photo and video company. Right. If I had exactly. said, you know, I want to be a 
photo and video person. There's nothing wrong with that. I just knew that there was there was more potential for it and that I could uh, put my talent and my effort towards other things in the company um, to move it forward, you know? Right. And that's very important for people to separate that, um, you know, often oftentimes, not to say that people have big egos, but people need to check their ego and say, am I trying to compete for something that I don't want? Right. You know, and that was my original view with some of the stuff that's, you know, gone, gone on in the company and stuff like that, where I, you know, I see digital advertising, you know, we have digital advertising specialists, they do a great job. And I think, oh, like, I want to learn all that. I want to know all that, um, which isn't a bad thing, but that's just not what I, I'm a web developer and I'm editing and I'm shooting videos. There's just, it, it wouldn't make any sense for me to try and do that too. Um, and just the same thing as Matt said, you know, understand what your strengths are. Your strengths are probably the things that you like doing. You know, maybe you're a better, um, you know, maybe you're a better digital advertiser than you are a web developer, but you love that web developing, then, you know, work on your web development. Right. And so that way, that's something that you can do. Um, but understand, you know, what you like and what your strengths are and understand that different people have different strengths and resources than you. Um, then that using everybody to the best of their ability and having people do what they love is a lot more important than trying to elevate everything as fast as you can. Right. And trying yeah. to bring everybody up to this, like, unattainable high level. Yeah. And, I, and it's not even like I've halted the opportunity to grow uh, in photo and video, for example. You know, like, I've ta I, right. I know how to work a camera. Um, and even you, like, with digital advertising, maybe that's not something you know a lot about now, but over time, since we're exposed to it, exactly. you're going to know a lot about exactly. it naturally anyways. Andrew Andrew knows firsthand because he's seen me do, like, not just taking photos, but maybe doing stuff, web development work, or something needed to be done to a website, or I Absolutely. took care of it. He's like, wait, you took care of it? Like, what do you mean? What is this? Or I've said some terms and stuff like that. He's like, how did you know that? Or this and that. So it's just stuff that rubs off from the team onto me you know, being surrounded by it over the past two and a half years. And I think that's something to know for you is like for digital right, exactly. advertising specifically. And it's, it's funny because I remember when uh, when we did the original Moda Couch commercial, there was a, <laughs> a period of time where the tech, the people who knew the cameras and knew everything were on the couch. Yeah. And one of the batteries in the camera had run out. Trying to walk Matt through opening the door on the camera, <laughs> getting the battery out and putting a new one in was a 15 minute operation. Whereas I'll walk into the office and I'll be like, oh, did you see the new raw codec that came out for the new like Sony a7S III? I think that would work great with our 85 1.4. And I'm like, wow, this man has not studied a single one of these things, nor does he pretend to be a filmmaker, but he knows this just from being around it. Or I'll have um, the equipment ready for you guys or something Exactly, like that. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh wow, you set this up perfectly. And he's yeah. Like, yeah, you know, I looked at it, did it the way it should be done. Uh -huh. um, and web development for sure, you've definitely surprised me before. Yeah. You know, I'll be like, oh, I'm not sure I know how to do this. You know, I'll get back to you, Matt, you know, uh, you know I'll take a look at it at home. Home, I take a look at it at home and in the time that it took me to drive from the office to my house this man's already figured it out and done it and done it mm -hmm. well uh, so definitely that kind of happens and it rubs off on everybody um, but the biggest thing is you know focusing and putting your energy towards what you want to do um, and everything else is kind of it's gonna come together uh, but don't try and push people in directions that they're just not meant to go in um, you know it's just won't end up good it will be wasteful it'll right. be wasteful yeah bringing the people that do you know love that particular thing exactly it's always going to be much better to do that even if it might seem like oh well, i can't afford another person right now you know right. i've got a marketing agency i don't have like an seo specialist i can't afford one you know look around for one thing people are gonna you know want to help you out especially if you you've got a good company you've got a good environment there's going to be people that'll say you know what i understand this is a sacrifice not the best rate in the world but i love what you guys are doing i'll help you out and in another sense um you're, you're gonna hire that you know you know, uh, search engine optimization specialist, and all of a sudden you're going to be able to offer these services to all these other clients. And it, through having the right people, you're going to be able to push departments further and you know better the company itself. So, and also uh, to know, we also don't limit a particular individual to what they love doing. And what I mean by that is sometimes uh, a web developer co will come in and they'll express their um, desire to learn about graphic design. And sometimes that ends up being another talent of them, right. which is something we promote, I mean, tenfold in the company. Absolutely. People take on multiple hats, hats here. Some people are even, you know, did their hands in all of our departments um, or both companies for that matter. Um, so we don't limit someone just because they already have a particular career or um, talent. We promote learning about other things too and, and you know, kind of take it from there. Um, so moving on to what it's like to manage a startup. So I wrote down a couple personal things that I've 
um, I guess, learned or thought of over the, the past two and a half years. So it's definitely the most challenging thing I've ever done. I mean, I, 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 was, I was coming out of co college, so I haven't done many challenging things in high school right. and in college, especially because high school is definitely not challenging. But that's a whole other conversation along with college. Um, but it's definitely the most challenging thing I, I've ever done. And I've learned so much about myself and my capabilities. You know, I, I, four years ago, five years ago, I don't know if I would have thought what I'm doing now is what I'm capable of. I, I maybe personally knew I had the potential, um, but I knew I needed to kick in the rear end. Um, and it needed to come from me anyways. You know, I needed to change, uh, change my lifestyle, change how my, my attitude towards life. Um, but I've learned more about myself in the past two years and what I'm capable of and also what I will be capable of than I have the past, you know, 15 plus years of my life. Um, and I think even same would go for you too. Like Absolutely. you progress way right. more than you have I'm from the time I know you. I know you know you better, of course. Yeah, for but sure. Um, in every way. I mean, on, even in things that you've, you never would expect to matter. You know, you never expect them to be tied similarly. You know, being able to go to a party and make friends immediately has absolutely nothing to do with developing websites, or so you would right. think, until you realize that through this whole entire experience, you've just become such a better, you know, more well-rounded person that you're able to make connections faster, and you're able to, you know, manage your time better, and you're able to contribute to many other different things. Um, so I'd completely agree with you on that. And the next thing is I've gotten familiar with failure. And I think that goes for a lot of our staff members too. Every, everyone, you know, screws up, makes a mistake. But me personally, I've made a bunch of mistakes over the past two and a half years. But that, that's again why we've gotten to where we are. Um, but here I am speaking publicly saying that I've, I've screwed up multiple times, you know, but I've, I've taken these mistakes and I'm just talking business wise. Um, and, I, and I've learned from it and I've used that to guide me in a successful path forward you know and i'm sure like i don't know andrew probably can't think of anything right off the bat like that's like a oh he failed at this or this was the wrong right. decision but like there's probably small stuff that you know think about that maybe i decisions i made and stuff um but i think that that's what has gotten us to where we are today so i wouldn't change any of those of those failures or, or any of those misdirections that i may have made because that's why we're here. Right, exactly. Know? And that's a very big thing. And I was lucky in, you know, myself that growing up, I was a very difficult person to deal with. Like, like I'm talking very young, like 10 year old me, 11 year old me was just a problem child. Um, and I understood that a lot of it came from the fact that I hated admitting that I was wrong and I hated admitting that I'd ever messed up. So even from like a young age, you know, through the end of middle school and through the, you know, through high school, I really doubled down on you know, getting used to admitting that I was wrong, getting used to rejection, getting used to all these kind of different things. Um, for one thing, it doesn't mean anything. You know, people people attach this huge meaning to, you know, making a mistake right. or doing something wrong. It literally means nothing. And there's absolutely no difference between being right and being wrong. It's just that, you know, how quickly you're able to switch from one to the other, right. that's important. But the actual status of itself, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, your peers don't really care. You know, you have this idea that like, oh, people are going to find out I'm wrong or people are going to find out I made a mistake and it's going to, you know, I'm just going to look dumb and they're going to lose some respect for me or maybe they'll be more careful with me because they know that I've made that mistake before. It's really not like that. Um, it's just a condition of a specific situation. If anything, it's opposite. Like if, if there's a mistake on a website and it was me, I'll be like, that was that was me. That right. was me. Like make right, it known. Exactly. Now I know not to do that again. You know exactly. what I'm saying? And, um, <laughs> Quite the opposite now. It's fantastic because, for one thing, people will love you. I mean, people will love the fact Respect. that you're able to say, hey, you know, I messed up. I made this. I'm, I did this wrong. Let me, you know, let me fix it for you. Let me do my best to get it done right. Um, I would much prefer that, you know, somebody who is, you know, very attentive and self-reflective than somebody who almost never messes up. But when they do, it's a whole problem trying to convince them otherwise. Yeah. I think, um, it, I, could, I think that can be categorized as a character trait or like a personality trait, but I think that's something that people yeah, can develop it's, it's if they don't have it. Right. I would, I would have definitely it. say that it's a skill. You know, being able to admit that you're wrong is a skill. Being able to bounce back from rejection. You know, you send out a proposal, they say, you know what, this is really not what we're looking for. Right. Or, you know, these prices are very steep. Or sometimes um, people will come up to you and say, hey, I just don't like your work. You know, I looked at some of this stuff. I, you know, I understand that your style has the right to exist, but it's just not what I want. And you think, wow, like that's crazy. I, you know, I worked so hard, to, um, you know, to to do this and to produce the best quality of work that I can produce. How is it that somebody doesn't like it? Uh, but really understanding that, for one thing, there's ample opportunity out there for everybody, and for another thing, that that doesn't reflect you. That's just how you react to it, will. But the failure itself isn't a reflection of you. 
Um, so definitely something that I think is very important is, uh, you know, being able to do that and being able to, you know, be at peace with yourself when you do. Moving on, uh, the next thing I have written down is the level of, or the appreciation I have for things I do have versus what I don't have. And that goes for both in my personal life and my business life. You know, sometimes I look at other businesses, our, our competitors, I say, oh, they have this, they have this, and we don't. Uh, but I've learned to, to balance, balance that out because everyone has a path. And I've learned to appreciate uh, things at a, at a more deeper level, like family time, because it's, you know, time, spending time with my family is now more, way more rare than it was even when I was in college two hours away because of, of how much I work. Um, so I now have a, an appreciation for certain things in life that I didn't have before, or at least a deeper appreciation for. Um, I guess it goes with like your maturity level and how you progress. You know, some people mature faster than yeah, others. Yeah, definitely. But um, definitely an appreciation both at the personal and the business level. And Andrew knew that too. I used to look at other businesses and say like, they have I was this, just about to that. say that. I yep. remember when you would yeah. you would look at other marketing agencies and be like, yeah. they have a server. Can we get a server? Yeah. I mean, we can. We yeah. don't have any use <laughs> for it. We have an amazing deal with an amazing, you know, hosting provider that is a gigantic company, way powerful than more, way more powerful than we ever will be. As far as hosting goes, there's no reason for a dedicated server, but they've got one and they use this song and they've got this awesome drone and the legs fold up and then the propellers fold in. Okay. Well, you know, understand that they, you know, they're different. And it's funny. I used to make fun of you a lot all the time. I'd be like, Oh, you like this? Maybe I'll put this on our website or you like this. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll put this over here. Yep. Um, and you know, through time you kind of understand that, uh, you know, for one thing, you're different from everybody else. And for another thing that, you know, to be grateful for the stuff that you have. Of course. Um, and it'll get there. You know, if we need a dedicated server, we eventually will have one. There's no reason to kind of judge your progress by the progress of other people. You know, it's not a zero sum game and there's no reason to compare, you know, yourself to anybody else. The next thing is it's exciting what we do. I mean, essentially, yeah, it could be grouped into like photo and video and marketing, but like we produce these results to have real time, real life, you know, effects on businesses, you know, so it's exciting stuff to see, you know, the, the clients come in and see their final photo, you know, photo, you know, photos that we edited or, or videos, um, you know, launching a website. It, it's exciting stuff. And, and not just from a client perspective too, but also coming into the office, you know, seeing how much everyone progresses, you know, seeing what other people think of the company. We always love to get co compliments and this and that. And it's funny because, most of the um, you know kids our age don't actually know what we do or what, what right. we're doing, um, but it, it's exciting stuff, you know. Moving on to, uh, and this is really important. Uh, I wrote this down as soon as I thought of it. Feeling like I have control of my future, so I, that kind of leads into being a number or just a name at a more of a corporate entity. I feel like I have control of our success and how we're going to move forward. Um, to, to a certain extent, of course, you know, I'm not oh my God here, but like, I feel like I have right. way more control than even my own parents have over their career, what, what they get to do on a daily basis, um, and just where they, they're going to go, you know, because their companies can deem them, you know, not experienced anymore or not, you know, valuable enough to keep them and just, and get rid of them. But for me, I feel like I have control of, of being able to get somewhere in, in my future. You know, it's on me now. So if I fail that there's no one else to blame. Um, so, yeah. All right. And not, not even so much, not, not only is it that there's nobody else to blame, but it's also the fact that, um, you can create opportunities for yourself right. and you have the resources to do that. Um, so for example, my dad works in computer science. And at any point, if the company decides, hey, this project, you know, a lot of these computer science companies are split on into a bunch of different teams that work on their own projects. Um, oftentimes, they'll decide, hey, this project is just not making us the money that we're hoping it's going to make us. Um, you know, we're just going to shut it down. It's not getting funding anymore. That team is either going to get fired or moved over to other departments. And if there's not another project that they can be moved to, it's quickly going to become a competition. And there are going to be fantastic employees that are lost. Um, and this happens in tech companies all the time. Um, and sometimes they're hiring tons of people because they've got tons of funding and tons of new projects. And sometimes they're laying you know, waves of people off as fundings for different projects close. Uh, that's not a problem if you have your own company. You know you have that opportunity. So say you have COVID, right? Global pandemic strikes. Um, for somebody who, like my dad, is working for an employer, it's will there still be funding on my project? Will I continue to have a job? Right. Or is that project going to get shut down because of this pandemic and I'm going to have to either fight for a spot in the department or risk being laid off completely? 
For us, it's not like that. For right. us, it's not what's going to happen. It's what are we going to make happen? Are we going to find a way to change what we do to adapt to this new situation? Or are we going to fall off because of the pandemic? You know, and there's a lot of the businesses we worked with were retail in-person businesses. If their shops are closed because legally they have to be closed, there's absolutely no content for me to make for them. I'm not going to record their videos. I'm not going to push digital advertising for them because what am I going to do? They're going to dish out money so people click on their ads then not be able to visit the store. You know, for us immediately it looks bad, but then we quickly realize cleaning services that offer, you know, um, all this dis disinfecting stuff that have all the licenses to do it correctly against COVID, all of a sudden they need marketing and they need it fast and they need a lot of it because you know now there's a huge market for them. Other services need a huge market. Our um, you know website department, oh man, so many of the guys we work with are you know in person shops. Well, they have products. They have products that need to be you know sold online now right. because of this whole thing going on. Let's quickly get all of these e-commerce platforms built and out there so that we can continue to survive as a company. So that's just an example of kind of the difference. And if you're a creative individual, if you're a problem solver. If you appreciate having that control, uh, then definitely that is a huge benefit, you know, with having your own company and having that opportunity. So to end talking about managing startups, the big question I get asked is why? A lot of people will say, well, why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? Why, why did you start a company in the first place? And, and a personal story to that too is when I decided to put college to the side, I can't tell you how many people went up to my parents and they'd be like, are you mad at him for leaving college? Are you, is, are you right. mad at him? I thought that was funny. They mm -hmm. laughed. They, they had to laugh at it too. Like, <laughs> right. well, it's originally not just sitting out of butt at home or any, playing video games or anything. They like were that. afraid too. I mean, it's oh, not yeah, to no, say my, that they were my like, own parents. yeah, go for no, it. Yeah, you know? but, but I mean, at that point, at the point of when I left college, they knew that there was something else going on. You know what I'm saying? Right, for sure. Um, yeah, at, at that point, definitely. Because the, yeah. the company already existed. But originally, at, when you had kind of threatened that you would leave, they oh, would no, be of like, course. oh boy. And that's going to be another story for another time is my own parents i mean even his too they they, they questioned a lot too um but even my own parents um not that they didn't fully support what i was doing they just were very skeptical and just curious i guess is the word for it those are two good words for it um which right. will be a, a story for uh one of our one of our other episodes um so as i was saying you know i, I get asked why all the time and they'll say, why, why did you, you know, start a company? Why, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Or why did you get into marketing? And it's not that I don't want to do anything else. It's, it's that I, I can't do anything else. Not that I, I don't want to go in. Like, I just, this is, I love what we do and I'm going to stick with it. You know, I'm sure I could get into other stuff and this and that, but this is what we're passionate about. I just physically and mentally can't do anything else. Like I know that's how sure I am of our success moving forward in, in EDB and, and both companies and any other company we add is that that's how sure I am is I just physically or mentally can't do anything else um right and you know I, I think that that's the best way to describe it and, and put it into words um moving on i have a question for andrew so andrew is it is it more fun or easier is it more fun or easy now that we have more resources and essentially money to play around with and, and what i mean by that is is not just equipment and uh, having all these high-tech things but obviously like two years ago our jobs were a lot harder because of what we had available to mm -hmm. us but do, do you find that this is more fun or back then was more fun because we had to work harder than back then but were we learning more then than now right. i wanted i wanted your opinion on that I would definitely say, I mean, I, I don't want to be definite about it. I, I, I was thinking about this before, too. Um, it's, it's really hard to say because, again, we do have, you know, awesome equipment now. And I have all of the gear to get done what I needed to get done. So if I have an idea, I want this crazy silhouette shot of a service member in a service bay. And I want the light to come through the windows. And I want it to bounce off the hood of the car onto his face. Like as crazy, as ridiculous as that sounds, I have the ND filters, the cameras, the lenses, the aperture, the shutter speed, everything that I need to be able to get that done. I can grade, you know, raw footage on the FS5. I can make it look exactly how I want to make it look. Um, so that's definitely entertaining because I can be infinitely creative. There, there's, is, there's no reason why if I can think of a shot, if it makes sense from a physical standpoint in my head, that it wouldn't be possible to produce. And that's just, you know, talking about photo and video. Um, but back then, you know, we didn't have those kinds of opportunities, but we had to 
kind of squeeze everything that we could out of what we had. We still got the so, job done. Like we, we never. Right. Absolutely. Um, but it was just a matter of, you know, I've got a camera and I've got a lens. How, just how creative can I get with these two right. things? So it really depends. It's like, uh, you know, thinking of like design, right? You know, sometimes people are like, oh, like I, I want to design this amazing, beautiful, like extravagant, you know, budgetless buildings. And sometimes that's very fun. And right. sometimes it's really fun to say, what if I had like, you know, a very small budget and a very small space, you know, how creative could I get within that? So they're very different. You know, working here now is very different than working before, but I had a, a fantastic time um, you know, working for the startup, you know, one year ago, even two years ago when it had first started. Um, for one thing, I didn't have as many worries just personally as I did now. You know, I was younger. I was just coming out of high school, you know, freshman in college. Really wasn't as, not stressful, but it just, there just wasn't as much going on as there is going on now in my life. Uh, we had less clients, you know, we had less employees. It was a very um, kind of tight group. I would definitely say that it was more fun back then just because of the, you know, more opportunity, less responsibility. I could spend 12 hours editing a, you know, minute and a half long video because for one thing, my rate wasn't extremely high. Uh, for another thing, if I needed to, you know, take some of those hours out and do some of it on my own time, I could do that. Um, and finally, you know, that was the one or two projects going on that week. Uh, and there was no reason not to, you know, really just sit there and kind of squeeze everything out of it. Now, um, it's a lot easier to produce much higher quality content. I mean, we have all the gear necessary. I, right. I can throw, you know, some of the commercials that we shoot, I can I put together so quickly and efficiently just because I'm so used to my team, my cameras. I know exactly how it's going to look in post, exactly how it's going to work. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, we've got a $150 color checker, so I know exactly what my white balance is. I don't have to sit there. I don't have to use a piece of paper. I don't have to do anything. Um, these things definitely help you produce you know, very high quality content very, very quickly. Um, but they require a little bit less, not work, but they require less, you know, really straining to get every, you know, every single pixel out of what you're doing. Right. I definitely enjoy my time now. I enjoyed my time back then. Um, it's not as risky now. I like risk, uh, you know. Uh, so back then definitely was, oh my God, we're gonna get an office. Like that might completely change the entire environment of what we're doing. Uh, now it's, it's just, it's kind of settled off but there's always new stuff coming up and there's always risks even now to this day. Uh, so I don't know, it's hard to say, but I definitely enjoyed the process throughout, you know? What a good question, right? I think that Absolutely. makes you think hard about it. So moving on to our stories slash lesson of the week. So I wrote down patience is a, is a valuable character trait. The reason I wrote that down is because uh, the past couple of weeks I've been realizing uh, there were a couple of clients that, uh, prospective clients that we had tried to, you know, uh, obtain as, as, you know, current clients, and they took about six to eight months to progress and now sign. So I just, you know, thought writing that down that, you know, it's, it's never over, you never know, just be patient, not just with clients, but in general, um, because things will work out no matter what. Um, and we ended up signing a couple clients in the past couple of weeks that we've been trying for a decent amount of time. Right. So I just thought that would be a good, uh, a good lesson of the week. Exactly. Um, yeah, I would definitely add to that and say that make sure not to burn your bridges. There's never, ever a reason. We, I mean, we've had uh, interactions where people have been unhappy with our work. We've had under, uh, interactions where there have been understand, you know, misunderstandings between um, you know, what somebody might expect and what somebody you know, might receive. Right. Um, we've had uh, businesses that ended up going a different route and you know, not going with us for one reason or another. Um, for one thing, most of the times it's a blessing because if there's, if a business is struggling with us and with our work, chances are we're struggling with them too. You know, a lot of the time it would be, we're already putting down too many resources. I already have way too many team members working on, you know, what they're doing. And we're starting to understand that, you know, I'm putting twice as much, you know, resources into this project as I should be. And they're only getting, you know, a half of the result that they want. This right. relationship isn't going to work. You know, we have different understandings of what, you know, the requirements are. Um, but never to burn those bridges. You know, there have been people who have been unimpressed with our work, you know, one or two years ago when we were shooting on a tiny little camera or maybe even our iPhones when we originally walked into Circle BMW who, you know, we've revisited and say, hey, two years ago, you know, you gave us a shot. It wasn't exactly what you were looking for. We we're still a small company. You know, let us show you what we can do now. And there have been people that we've blown away, you know, people who run into our office and say, I want everything. I can't believe how far you guys have come. Yeah. Uh, so definitely, you know, keep keep your relationships positive, even if it's not going to work out, even if it never will be revisited. You know, keep that. And a good example of that is we just had someone come back after two years. One of our first clients mm -hmm. 
come back after two years and be like, what the bleep is going on here? What is this? Like, oh, my goodness. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, we have. We definitely have had that happen. Um, so, so, you know, keep that opportunity open. Definitely understand that it's not personal. Um, there's a million reasons why somebody might want to go with you and might not want to go with you. Um, so that, that's very important for me. I'm going to change mine. Originally, I was going to say, you know, don't be afraid to say yes to things, but I feel like I hammer that point in almost every single podcast. So I'm going to change it to, um, everybody in the business world, no matter how successful they are, definitely loves the whole startup thing. And they love the journey that, you know, has taken them to get up there. Uh, do not be afraid to ask questions and to meet people, you know, who are way ahead of you. I remember when I first started going to a bunch of networking events, there was one that was held by a person who I don't idolize, but I was incredibly, incredibly impressed with, you know, uh, his journey and the company that he'd started. He runs a cybersecurity agency, um, and I've seen the work that they've done. I've seen them pop up on forums and stuff like that, and I'm always so impressed with how far it's come. And he happened to be at this networking event, and I come up to him, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I, I feel like I know who you are. Um, and, you know, he gives me his card, and I read the name on the card, and I'm like, no way, like CEO and everything. Thing. I was absolutely blown away and I, and I asked him I was like well why are you here you know you're in a little bit of a different business than everybody else at this networking event you know people don't need millions of dollars of cybersecurity, and they definitely don't meet in a Starbucks to talk about how they need that you know why are you here and he said oh man like I love the process and I love teaching you know younger kids what you know what they can do better and you know here he was there with one of his friends too who is incredibly successful and owned many many different businesses and, you know, going to these events and going to these, you know, networking events with them uh, definitely learned a ton and they taught us so much. You know, there have been other people who have helped us out a, a huge ton, um, people who make hundreds of dollars an hour who will take five, six hours out of their day to sit with us and talk to us and teach us things. Um, and not because they feel like they need to. It's not, uh, you know, oh, I'm volunteering and donating my time to these guys here. No, they're genuinely very passionate about it. So. Uh, don't be afraid that if you're smaller than somebody else, um, that they're not going to be interested in talking to you. They could be, you know, they could be very busy and not interested in talking to you. But a lot of the times you'll be surprised just how much people are willing to help you out and how much they're going to support your journey. Absolutely. So wrapping up today's episode to give you a sneak peek into next week, uh, episode five is going to be titled the best tools and softwares for your business. So talk about, you know, CRMs, CMSs, you know, social media networks, what's what you know, what you should be active on for your business. Everything from A to Z, we're going to have some members of our digital marketing team on there along with members from our social media department. Um, and wrapping up to give a couple shout outs to David, our soundboard engineer, also to Uncle Vinny listening from Florida, and of course Ming and Mike from a shared podcast, a shared universe podcast studio. Their team's great here. Uh, they're always amazing. They're amazing people, always there to accommodate us and help us with every, whatever we need. So shout out to Ming and Mike. And lastly, be sure to check out our website at everydaypodcast.biz. That's B-I-Z at the end. Um, our Instagram is Everyday Podcast IG, and our Facebook is Everyday Podcast F. Be. Also check out our YouTube channel and LinkedIn, uh, both just at the Everyday Podcast. And lastly, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or want to be a guest on the show, um, please email us at info at everydaypodcast.biz. That's B-I-Z at the end. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.